Hi lovely people, this week I wanted to talk about a book that I read recently that I have some thoughts on, shock, horror, surprise, I never do that on this channel, ever. <laughs> The book in question is Recollections of Rossetti by Hall Kane. I hauled this fairly recently, by which I mean sometime this year. This is non-fiction. It's an account of Hall Kane's time living with the pre-Raphaelite painter um, Dante Gabriel Rossetti. I am a massive pre-Raphaelite fan. <laughs> As a small ginger-haired child growing up, the pre-Raphaelites were like this beacon of like red-headed celebration and I think I like clung to them. Of all the pre-Raphaelite artists, um, Dante Gabriel Rossetti is probably the one whose art I am most in love with and have been most in love with since I was a child. I've only really ever read about William Morris and by extension like Burton Jones, stuff like that, so I only really know about Rossetti as a person in how he relates to William Morris, because that's all I've ever really read about. So this is, um, when I saw this book, I think it was in a second-hand bookshop, that's where I get most of my stuff, um, I was really intri intrigued because I wanted to read something that was not just about Rossetti as a person, but that's like a contemporary source about Rossetti as a person, whereas all the William Morris stuff I've read has either been um, like primary stuff that he's written, or um, like specifically, oh it's too far away, but specifically William Morris' A Life by Fiona McCarthy is a massive hoiking biography that's super interesting and talks a lot about the pre-Raphaelites in general, but it does always obviously come back to Morris. So um, I think because all of my sort of actual really learning about the pre-Raphaelites has been through sort of a Morris lens. I've not had like the most favourable view of Rossetti as a human being because of the whole like Janie Morris situation. Um, I think he could be, and like the way he would be quite cutting towards Morris sometimes with his like doodles and stuff like this. So um, I've often said that Rossetti is my favourite painter but he's probably a bit of a dick. <laughs> not helped by Aidan Turner's portrayal in Desperate Romantics, which I know Desperate Romantics is not where you should be going for your historical accuracy. However, Aidan Turner played him very well, but he did play him like a bit of a, like, bit of a wanker. <laughs> this is a very long rambly way of saying that, although I am in love with his art style, maybe I have not always been super generous to him as a person. So this was really lovely to read. <laughs> the time period that this takes place in is towards the end of Rossetti's life. So. Um, towards the end of his life, he became quite isolated. He self-isolated himself um, from a lot of um, pre raphaelite Brotherhood and from a lot of people who he had previously been his friends. After the whole digging up your dead wife to grab your poetry thing, obviously, like, the public opinion of Rossetti sort of dipped a bit after that because everyone was like, hey babe, that's not cool. Um, so a lot of people then started to like attack Rossetti and the um the things he was putting out. So there's this one poem which got quite like like attacked and so Hall Kane delivered this lecture that was like in defense of this poem and then um just because he's a massive fanboy sent it to Rossetti and was like hey by the way I really love you um here's the thing I wrote about you or I said about you and um Rossetti replied and then they started this relationship that was happening through letters, through correspondence, and then eventually they did meet, and then following on from that meeting, one thing led to another, and they did end up living together for a while, and they were living together when Rossetti died. Um, so that's like your basic, like, setup. Like, where are you? This is what's happening. This is what's going on. I really enjoyed this, more than I thought I was going to when I first started reading it. When I first started this, Hall Kane, because he is a massive fan of Rossetti's, he was like a little bit fanboy -y. <laughs> You know, like when he's talking about the way that their correspondence started and how you can't imagine how he felt, and um, there's that sort of Victorian, like, um, infusing, which is very over the top and does seem a little bit, like, not contrived, but I don't know, there's like, there's, it's very extreme in its adoration. And I was like, oh God, is this gonna be an entire, like, book of fanboying? But actually, what this became was um, a very compassionate look at Rossetti and at Rossetti's mental state during the final months of his life. 
he um, had a dependency on coral, is that how you say it? Chlor coral? Chloral? I don't know. Um, but essentially it's an opiate and um, Rossetti essentially became addicted to that and that obviously had a massive effect on him as a person but then also as a result of all of the criticism he faced after um, exhuming the body of Lizzie to get the poems back he became he retreated so there's this combination of retreating against public backlash and um, becoming more introverted anyway as a result of these drugs that he was taking and so Rossetti became quite different to how he was earlier in his life and so this turns into a really I keep saying the word compassionate because that is what this narrative feels like it is Hawkeye doesn't shy away from showing you the ways in which um, these things had affected Rossetti badly and the ways in which he was not always like the best person he could be because of that but he does it through such a compassionate way because he has this fundamental like love and admiration for Rossetti um it was just a lot more measured than I think I expected it to be initially because it's towards the end of Rossetti's life and he's not really creating so much both because he mentally is not having that creativity and then also towards the end of his life physically could not do so there is some discussion about Rossetti's own works but there's actually a lot of really interesting discussion about how Rossetti mentored Hall Kane and how he sort of gave all this feedback on his writing and stuff like that. And that's really interesting to me because, you know, you get a sense of what Rossetti valued in literature and the types of things he would encourage and discourage in an aspiring writer. Um, that was just like a really in interesting insight to me. I should add on like just a practical reading note, this is actually very easy to read. I don't know if you can see, but the font is very big, it's quite nicely spaced. Um, so this is actually, it was a very quick read. And although I said he was a bit like gushy and stuff like this at the beginning, like he's not overly flowery, like his writing is pretty simple and easy to read in my opinion. So um, if you are someone like me, who is a pre-Raphaelite fan, who is always wanting to consume more of the works, I would super duper rec recommend this, if only because you're getting like a first hand account of one of the founders and one of the most iconic figures in it. Um, it's not unbiased, I wouldn't say that, however it is more unbiased than I think I expected it to be. There is more of a showing you of a nuanced person rather than just like glorifying someone. Um, so that was really super interesting. But that's all I really have to say. <laughs> I hope you are having a super great day, I hope everything is good with you, and I'll see you next week.